It hey. says live. Hey, how's it going, bros? It's PewDiePie. Hey, oh, it's <laughs> Pew hey. Um, hi. We're doing a uh, substance playing today, and we have Mr. Sean Gilman here. Crashed again. Hello, oh, how you doing? Special guest. He's Special gonna guest. he's gonna talk about a little event <coughs> that's going on in the area. Yeah, I'll be largely quiet through the most of what you guys are doing, just listening to what you guys are talking about on substance. But then, yeah. Talk about um talk about it later on. It's about uh, game jam, eh? So awesome, cool man. Before we start, um, Sean, we we do this every week. New person comes on, they've got to share their work. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You want to show off a bit of your work off? Uh, all right. Let's um, how do I do this? Am I gonna have to share my screen? Well, yeah. All right. Okay. If you want to start talking, and I'll find my uh find my work, then I'll just I'll bring it up. A quick little story before we start, then um. I got home like literally five minutes ago, so I'm comp I'm not ready for this. That's why I'm hoping you guys have something sorted out. <laughs> well, yeah, it's going to chime in every now and again. Chris is going to be the only one with something truly ready. <laughs> for me, Oktoberfest started yesterday. Ooh. I had, was partying all day, and then this morning I woke up pretty late, and then had to tidy up. So, you know, I'm not ready. And tried on my later hosen. You can check out the Facebook pictures on my uh, later hosen. My page. <laughs> Some sexual action there. Max, do you know any German yet? Uh, nein. No, I don't know a little bit. Ich hätte gern ein Currywurst, bitte. Yeah, that's it, pretty much. I can ask for things, what I want to oh, eat. I know how to say hello. That's about it. Yeah. I don't know I any know. of it. I Most know. people say, like, servus instead, because it's like hello and goodbye. It's like a greeting. Like, servus. So you're passing them. You know. you know how like um sometimes like in in um in England or just English speaking countries people say like sayonara or Ola. everyone says ciao ciao ciao, ciao, oh, ciao. Okay. ciao. Go goodbye ciao ciao yeah. all right guys okay yeah uh, let me um let me show my screen and show you some stuff so here we go yeah the golden uh, action okay. how am I gonna do this though how does this work you click you click screen screen share you have There's nice post screen on the top left. Top left. Oh man, I see Chris's yeah. face as well. Okay. Your face. I see Kieran's face as well. All right, here we go. Here's there we go, guys. So, here he is. Cool. Yeah. So, um, I like these guys as well at the moment. Both. Wow. Well, what's going on? That's not. Is that me? Is it? Am I doing it? Yeah. Yeah. Don't worry about that. Hey, wait. Hang on. Screen. You just turned off screen share. Yeah, you, you were there, then you turned it off. It's the green yeah. TV. Oh. And you just click it, and then you just do entire screen. Yeah, there we go. Boom. That, right, yeah. So studying uh, games, um, studying games art design at uh, Dumfries University. Um, just going into my second year of my degree. Uh, yeah. So some of the work that we've got so far is more or less 2D, 3D based work. Um, and we don't, I don't really know which sort of direction we want to go in just yet. And so this is where we'll find out this year. But at the moment, we're getting into some painting. I uh, do some really. Bad work. <laughs> I really like this one. Isn't no, it? That's good, man. That's cool. What's your uh, the boat one? You mean? Oh, yeah. the, all of them. All of all of them. Yeah. Like those. <laughs> but yeah, there was a there was a master study as well of like um. Yeah. Died quite recently. Go up, um, go up to the Last of Us thing. The Last of Us one. It's really, yeah, there's a lot of things wrong with it. If, if you say it's, it's not Last of Us, you're lying. <laughs> no, it's uh. <laughs> It's um, actually a Star Wars piece, um, and so I was quite inspired. <laughs> so, yeah, so you can clearly tell where I got my inspiration from that. Um, yeah, I'd like to change a few things about most of these, but yeah, I'm you know, still working away every day and trying to improve. Um, but also, so you've got my, my 2D work here, but you know, I'm trying to work on my 3D too. So um, I got features recently on Sketchfab. Awesome. Doing, um, yeah. like, it's one um, of the okay. best pickup trucks I've seen in first year's man, Gigi. It was really yeah, good. Yeah, really Thank nice. you. Thank you. Yeah, but um, yeah, so, um, be content, but never satisfied. So you've got to keep on learning. <laughs> and then, so yeah, I just wake up every day and just learn new things, particularly stuff like you know substance. I'm learning a bit of zip brush as well. Um, what you guys did last week um, on your last one, where you talked about uh, normals, that was, uh, was pretty good too. So yeah, thanks for that, guys. And happy to find out a little bit more about substance today. Awesome. Well, you're in for a rubbish day then. To try um, wait, okay. guys, guys, before we um, before we start, Denzel's here now, so I don't. I'm, I'm just going to pass it on to him and let him continue from here. Cool. All Denzel right. Um, is, uh, so I, don't, I'm, I think Denzel might want to show off his work. I don't know how, but I'll pass it on to him. Yes, you can just get. Yeah, she has green, honey. 
Hey, dudes. Denzel. Hey, Denzel. Hey, hey. hey so you too. Too. How's it going? How you doing, buddy? Not bad. Not bad at all. Not bad. I'm really full. Off burritos. How do you? How do you? Bit hungover from last night. Do you want to? Do you want to share some of your work? Introduce yourself. Yeah. Okay. Um. <laughs> sure. Denzel's another guest star. Uh, he's just here, I guess. Good old Denzel. <laughs> One second. While he's uh, getting ready, should we start the tutorial? Bear with me, dudes. Bear with me. Yeah. So this week we're going to be talking about Substance Painter, which is a pretty cool program um, where you know you can sort of it's kind of like combines Photoshop and your know, 3D model, so you can like paint materials onto it directly and stuff. It's a really cool sort of program. I haven't used it too much. I was like sort of learning it more this week. Chris is the one who's used it most, I think. Out of everyone, so he'll be like the main guy. But I mean, starting off, you can see the sort of the the UI here. You've got like you know texture settings and viewer settings, so you can change yep. the, you know, the environment thing. Here's your alphas for your brushes that you can mm -hmm. apply, uh, stencils or whatever they're called sometimes. Um, here's your brushes themselves, each with their own sort of properties. Again. Customize them, and here's your materials. They have a lot of pre-made materials. You can make your own ones as well, though. Uh, all PBR as well, goodness. And then you have your layers up here, pretty similar to Photoshop when we get using them. And then you've got your properties, which will combine where you can combine your, you know, your materials, your brushes, your alphas, your tools, textures, whatever. And all these properties will come up. Uh, by the way, Chris, what is the uh, thing for? What is the audience seeing right now? Uh, you. <laughs> oh, they are seeing me. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Um, so when you start off, you know you might want to put your own model in to file new, as per in most things. Select your mesh. Yep. I'm going to be taking over the crate we had from last week. Um, so where's the text? That's quite important, by the way. If you want to get a model into it, hit new. <laughs> it's yeah, really weird. New. You have to make a new instead of open thing. it or import. It's like a new thing. And then if you have any normals you've made already, like baked maps you or height maps, them. you can add them in. So you've got you can work with your normal map already in there. So this is really important if you're using like sculpted things from ZBrush and you've got your base mesh and then you want to put you know the higher details that you already sculpted in ZBrush into it. You can do that, which is really really good part. Cause then you can just paint the other smaller surface details on top and stuff like that. So the core bake structure you can sort of keep. So got that and here's my box. It won't necessarily apply the normal map straight away, you'll just have the uh, you know the, the the model. So as you see from last week, it's the same crate, it's got all the vertex normals nicely rounded and stuff. So I'm gonna want to put my uh, my texture onto it. If you scroll down this bit up here for some reason it's being really annoying and massive at the moment. <laughs> uh, additional maps and you can select your normal map and you see I've got mine here. If you want to find that in your scene, it's just at this shelf here. You scroll along, find your textures and you see that's the textures you imported. You can also import other things from the import image. So I might have some ambient occlusion that I quickly baked out before this and I might want to apply that. Now you can either apply that to an ambient occlusion map or you can actually fill it and make it a fill layer that multiplies sort of on top of it all, yep. uh, which is a nice thing because this tool is just like Photoshop really with the layers system, so you can have masks and all sorts of really fun stuff. So you see at the moment I've got my uh, my box here with the you know the basic height map stuff that I made last week, so that's quite nice in this nice nice background. And how this works is you've got sort of four channels that are on the go at any time. So if I pick a material I might want to paint with just straight away just so I can illustrate the different channels for you. Let's get, I don't know, metal steel, whatever. Let's try that. Uh, so I can just paint it on, as you can see, just painting on. And at the moment it's painting on roughness, uh, height, metalness, and diffuse channels. So you can see it's already painting in some of these surface details and stuff just off the bat automatically, which is really cool. Nice, nice. It's awesome. So if you want to change what you're just painting on, you see here the material. 
it's got like what brush I have, what alpha I have, and then the material properties, color, height, rough, metal. So I wanted to not paint in height anymore. You see as I'm painting, it's not got any differences where that's definitely got height maps, as you can see. Or I maybe don't want to paint, I do want to paint in height, I don't want to paint in anything else, maybe. So then you can just paint in height. So loads of choice. Changing it there. You can, yeah, you can paint lots of really cool things. And then also you have sliders down here where you can sort of change the different types of the, uh, you know, how high it is and stuff like that, which is really, really fun. Uh, you can also, so in each layer, there's, again, as I said, there's the channels. To so cycle through channels on your, in your 3D port, just the C key. So here I am in base color now. Here I am in height information. So at the moment I'm painting it, you know, it's all been painted on. Uh, roughness, so that's different roughness details. Again, grayscale map. Uh, the whiter it is, the rougher it is, the blacker it is, the shinier it is. So if I wanted to paint on with like a, a really, really oily substance or something, I don't know. Their car paint. I did that. You see, it's like black, and then when I go into my materials, it's really, really shiny. Uh, oh. So yeah, roughness, metallic. That's you know the metallic value. If it's white, it's a metal. If it's black, it's not a metal. Um, so yeah, C to cycle through to get back M, and then you've got your PBR view again. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean con holding control and the clicks, and then control and then right clicking and then moving your mouse forward and back changes the brush size um, with the left button it changes the sort of opacity of the of what you're you're doing so you know it's whoop, you see like that which is pretty simple uh, to move around yeah alt right click to zoom alt left click to you know rotate and alt middle mouse button to, to pan around your scene I guess that's like a a very basic intro. It's really similar to other 3D programs. I guess, uh, Chris, do you want to take the next bit? Explain some more stuff? Yep, let's go for it. Uh, share my screen. Ooh. Yeah, so I'm going to texture a helmet. It's probably the easiest way of showing everything about it. So I'm going to import my helmet. I'm going to put it to... I'll put it to 4K because I can layer it later on. And we have a helmet. Nice. And then uh, I don't want the background, so this little slider here turns it off. Now we can just see it how it is. And it's Iron Man, obviously. So the first thing I want to do is a bit of metal. Spider -Man. It. Looks like Spider Man. I thought it was Spider Man. <laughs> Spider Man's my favourite Avenger. <laughs> So up here in the top right corner, if you can see, you've got new layers, that thing, that just makes new layers. The one on the far right is delete layers, and then fill layers. I'm going to put a fill layer on. And then down here is what I want to put in the fill layer. So I'm going to cover the whole thing. So I want it red, it'll go red. But first things first. Uh, I just want the material down. So no colour, no height, and just rough and metal. Is it metal? Yes. <laughs> so it's white. And then change the roughness to somewhere that I like. What do you like there? So we have metal pretty much instantly straight away. And I've not selected myself the whole time. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> Don't worry, guys, you didn't miss anything. All I did was hit fill layer and then turn the slider up. That's all I did. That's what you missed. Okay. Um, the coolest thing about this ever is that it bakes textures straight into it. So in this top left corner, if you scroll down, you see baked textures. This pop-up comes up. I can make it bigger. Not really. And you can choose what you want to bake. Uh, I'm just going to bake everything. And then I hit this little, I don't know, 
paper icon. Choose my high poly. Or you can choose the same mesh if you want. It doesn't matter too much if you're trying to get a curvature map. So I choose the high one. Bake. And it's just going to go and bake them down. And the resolution set to 4K, so it might take a few minutes. Hopefully not too long. <laughs> there we go. So what it's doing, it's got a normal map from the high poly version that I've already made. Ambient collision map, a curvature, world space normal, pretty much everything. I hear Josh in the background there. Yeah, he's having a Josh. time. Kieran and Josh are playing Super Smash Bros. <laughs> Brilliant. Nice. Good time. Good time. I think Josh just won. Yeah, he did. Yeah. <laughs> Kieran looks a bit grim, so I think he just lost. It's because Kieran's pretty shit. I know, he is pretty shit. <laughs> uh. So with... Um, if you've got a curvature map and an ambient occlusion map, it can work off smart materials, basically. A curvature... If I can... Can I preview it at all? Hmm. Oh, there it is. Curvature is like an edge map. It says where the edges are. And the occlusion is saying where the shadows are. Does it generate curvature maps, or do you have to create them yourself? It, it generates them. That's what I did then when I hit bake textures. Ah, oh, okay, I see. Nice. So you do that from your high poly one. So from there, it can use any of these smart materials really effectively. So some of these, like... Uh, weapon metal or metal paint they have edge wear which is quite nice so you can just drop these in like that once it loads it also the, the file size is at 4k but my viewing size is also at 4k so if you're having uh, issues running it just drop it down to like 1k so the preview is showing it lower than it and uh, lower than it'll actually be. But yeah, that's put uh, edge wear on based on the curvature map, which is you you're pretty much halfway there with like just one click. And if you go into the layers, because a smart material has layers. You can just change anything you want about it. Like the dirt, the, uh, the edge wear. <laughs> Destroyed it. Uh, what's this one? Yeah, that's like just dirt on the surface, on the roughness. See that? That's quite nice. But and they're all, you can change everything about them. And another thing to keep in mind as well, with like these, uh, the edges, the way they're worn at the moment, they can be pretty uniform. And yep. because they all work on masks, like in Photoshop, you can sort of paint away at the, to like manually remove some of that, uh, that detail so it doesn't look as uniform. You see like at the moment where the mask sort of joins the jaw, it's really uniform almost, the amount, you know, it's sort of wearing away. Whereas in real life, Something like a helmet, it would wear at different points, at different amounts. So you could, he could, Chris could physically go into the mask and like paint with a black value to sort of like remove that, and as, after adjusting some of the sliders as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. That was actually uh, the crit you got, Chris, on. Uh, yeah, this Facebook. is that was like a demo for this, really. Yeah, yeah. But you can drop any smart material into this and then change them around, and they will have different things going for them. Like uh, copper, 
that do. Yeah, I guess you'll have that because you'll have different effects when you've like painted metal and and so on, right? So yeah. yeah. So at the moment on this copper on the copper one that was just on, you saw at the edges it was like oxidized copper, so it was like green, it like rusted away, had yeah. you know, like copper does. That's why you see like you know, Statue of Liberty's all green as you know, as dingus now because. Well, <laughs> it's ruined. Obviously, um, Iron Man is in this colour. So we're going to change that. The other thing is, it's all interchangeable. I can go into like the bottom layer, underpaint, which is colour, and change that to whatever I want. You can make War Machine if you wanted to. I can make War Machine. Yeah. So that edgeware is still there, it's just because the colour below it is pretty much the same. And then I'll add a field layer. What colour is Iron Man? Let's Google Iron Man. <laughs> Here he is, old Iron Man. No, it's just <laughs> too many tabs open. So if you want colour, I'm going to use my colour picker and just drag it to the other screen where I can get, see, like a yellowy type thing. <laughs> it's not that colour at all. <laughs> Whatever, let's make it any colour. Anyone on the uh, oh, no, watching for comments on YouTube actually? Just realised one of us should probably be doing that. I'm kind of watching it. Anything yet? Anything we could answer? No, <laughs> it's just Mike and John. Not great. <laughs> Ignore them. Not them again. <laughs> always the ex-host, just looking for that you know, moment of fame. And then obviously, Iron Man here. He's got a red bit, and he's got the uh, yellowy bit. Did you do, How do, we do that? Well. An ID thing. What, did you put put an ID map in when you were doing the smart materials? No, nope, not yet. No. Which I should have done from my high poly version. If I'd done that, then I could get this uh, differentiation between the red and the yellow. So one thing you can do, the most tedious way, is to paint it. You can just paint straight on. No one's going to do that. That sucks. Um. <laughs> So another thing, you can get uh, an ID mask, and I made one somewhere. Let me find it. Textures. Yeah, there we go. Mask. So I'll drop this into textures. And all this is is, uh, I think the areas that are red were masked off. Oh, the other way around, I'm not sure. We'll find out. So I'll make another fill layer. And this one's going to be red. And if I right click add bitmap mask, I can click that. And it's masked it off based on the mask that I've already made. I just made that in Photoshop. You can see how rough it looks. We're pretty much nearly away. Very quickly, it's just a really quick workflow. How it works. Nice. So you could drop stuff on like sand if you wanted. That doesn't mean it's sand, you can change the colour. And now it's, say, dirt, whatever you want. Also, the coolest thing about this ever is that you can paint normal maps. So if I get a normal brush, new layer, <laughs> paint no colour, no rough, no metal. 
and then you can slide this any way you want. So that's coming out. You can go the other way. So you can literally paint into it, you can mould. It's awesome. And Have you used the uh, particles yet? Hey? Have you used the particles thing yet? Oh no, I'll share that in a second. Yeah, good, good. Cool. You change the brush, you can... Actually, that's a bit bad. Paint details on. Easily. And then, as Max said, there's something called particles, which is ridiculous. You've got broken glass, you click that, and it breaks. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a good way of sort of like, it sort of um, almost simulates like wear over time, I'd guess. It's a good way of sort of describing it. Uh, like you can burn things and like have them like have sort of like... Uh, like liquid fresh has been put on them and all sorts of funky things. So you can get like, um, so you've got like the engines of a plane. You could use it to like create, you know, like a, the, the back of a jet engine has got sort of like been burnt and it's like it gets black and oily and stuff. Mm -hmm. You could like simulate that. It's really cool. If I turn color on it as well, I set it to black and then I'll show burn. And you can get like oil drips as well, if it's like an oily machine or something. Quite intense at the moment. But that one's good. crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I'd need that, but that's cool. <laughs> yeah, heavy leaking. So but you'd put it like, like lightly in at like yeah. certain parts, like say underneath yeah, you could put it in a, the eye. You could probably use the uh, ambient occlusion to mask it off, actually. Yeah. Laser impact. Mm -hmm. Things like noise, like sandstorm. Mm He's -hmm. probably better without high, actually. Mm -hmm. You get like this weathering. If you make it rough, that looks cool. Veins? Yeah, there's a lot of weird things that you probably never use, but. They're cool. They're cool. Uh, John says, where do you stand with using the default materials from a library? Uh, it depends how you use them, really. Like, don't just uh, drop something in and use that. Don't go like that. Drop machinery in. Hit yes, then export everything. Don't do that. These are just uh, already set up materials. That's all they are. So when you look at how they work, they already have curvature plugged in and ambient collision plugged in, and it's easier to get these edge effects that work. Also, I'll just turn it back to 4K to show you what it actually looks like. Yeah, it's a lot sharper now. And you can totally render it in this as well. Uh, if you go down here to post effects, it's got everything that every renderer has, like depth of field. You can just turn that on. You can go ahead and render it in here if you want. Crashed right now. 
You can hear it. Yeah, it's getting destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got you got any questions, guys, about that? Uh I guess um did you go through importing oh, you see went through importing, right? And then how about like <laughs> exporting that? Exporting? So, yeah. Like export export channels. channels, control shift D. And that's it. And you just <laughs> export that and you've got all your maps. I'm simple yeah. though, isn't it? <laughs> pretty cool. You know, and then yeah, then you're done. So then you can what, what, what do you want it for? PBR right. metal roof? Yeah, we go. Change the size. Change where you're gonna put it. Hmm. Simple as uh, Okay, so the idea is this is gonna dramatically um like increase the or like your your workflow will just be cut in half of the previous yeah. way we used to do this, right? So yeah. 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 But remember, if you know, wow, I just uh, kind of blown away. Combine it with like lots of other programs, so you could still use Photoshop at times if there's something very specific that you need, like an effect. You know, you might need to take it back in just to like hand do that. Of it's just like a nice way of quickly doing things. It's like tools are supposed to. They're supposed to speed up your workflow and get to a good result quicker. So this is a really good tool because you can get things like the Edgeware, really nice, really quick. You can get, you know, you know, your own specific sort of materials, and they're all made PBR in conjunction with one another at the same time, rather than, yeah, before you'd sort of be exporting, importing, like checking out if it's working or not in another program from Photoshop, or whatever. So this is much better because you're painting directly onto the model. You see all the effects of all the yeah. You see what's happening as it happens. Yeah, which is which is the key for the tool, definitely. Here's a question then for you guys. Uh, for a newbie's perspective then, would you reckon it's better to use this software um, without, you know, if you've never done anything like this, if you've never rendered it in PBR, uh, do you reckon it'd be better to start with Substance Painter or start traditionally with like um, Photoshop and then try this once you've understood how it works? You should definitely understand how all the maps work in the yeah. first place. Yeah. Okay. But it's still like a benefit to learn this, you know. Yeah, wouldn't yeah. Like, like people who use ZBrush as character artists and they pretty much only use ZBrush, they still know how to model in like Max if they need to and stuff, you know. Yeah. Oh one thing you might want to know as well is uh I'm using a pen tablet on it. It does work with pressure sensitivity. It's not now turned it off. If you scroll up on your material, it says flow. And there's a little circle, you hit that, put pen pressure on. And then it'll work off my pen pressure. But it is kind of like Photoshop. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you can just paint on your UVs there on the side. Straight onto that. And change that to just 2D. 3D. Yeah, it's awesome. Anything else, guys? Oh, yeah, I mean, you've covered it. You've covered it. Quick. Nice. We're done. Half the time. We're much better now. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I guess, uh, Denzel, are you ready to talk about you know, what you're bringing to the table? Oh, geez. Pressure. Yep. I'm putting pressure. pressure on. Um... Well, yeah, um, my name's Denzel, Denzel Ford. I'm a student with most of these guys at De Montfort University. Uh, I'm aspiring to be a character artist, namely for uh, Creative Assembly. I like working on the Total War games. Uh, I would say I'm you know, an a, a newbie, an amateur at the moment, but I'm working quite hard to learn all the software and everything I need to do, uh, need to know, and um, yeah, learning anatomy and all that. But, yeah... Um, uh, is there anything you guys want to get from, out of me in particular, or is there anything you'd like to see? Or no? uh, you got a portfolio? Yeah, yeah sure, sure. It's a bit rough at the moment. I'll be honest. I haven't added most of my new stuff, but I'll show you what I got on the moment. Cool. 
Can you see? Can you see, guys? Yeah, cool, man. Yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a bit rough at the Very moment, rough. I will be honest, but yeah, that's it. And yeah, that's my night character. So, uh, I mean, you have Substance Painter on your computer at the moment. Yeah, I do. Um, open up your night and start trying to. We can guide you through. Yeah, you know, the beginning of uh, your night, maybe. Be one good. second. Yeah, sure. One second, dude. Oh, um, just out of curiosity, do you guys want to see the uh, my uh, Wandering Lands of Alice, the uh, yeah, it, yeah. library competition? Do it. Before. Just do it. <laughs> oh, can you see it? Can you see it, guys? Mm -hmm. Oh, Chris, if you switch. Can you see there. anything moving? Yeah, I'm on. Yeah. Cool. Is it laggy at all? No, no. Just play it, man. Okay, dude. All right. So yeah, this is the uh, off the map competition that uh, my group worked on. Uh, it was about 15, 14, 15 weeks, I think. Uh, too long. <laughs> way too long. Way too long. Uh, but yeah, no, it was for the uh, British Library, and yeah, we were lucky enough to get nominated. So I guess it paid off in the end. Um, awesome. Yeah, we went for like a stylized um, sort of uh, little big planet. Type Sue Blackwell style, um, but yeah. To be honest, like even looking at it now, I have no clue what kind of style it is. I still don't. <laughs> um, I let other people just decide, and then I just decide upon that. So yeah, um, it was it was really fun to work on. I learned a lot um, about workflow, and you know, obviously I learned a lot about technical, the more technical aspects of art and. Uh, in games, but I also learn, you know, what's the best way to work, especially over a long period of time, because um, we're used to having these short, shorter projects, but um, it's harder to know what the what's the best work, way to work during a long period. So, um, yeah, I know it was a really great project, and mm. yeah, I had a good, great time, a great time. Good. Uh, I'm not sure I'll be able to load the night up because I'm on Kieran's computer at the moment. But <laughs> if, if you ever want me to do it again, I can definitely pull up, pull it up, and you can some crit. Yeah. So yeah, that's what I've got at the moment, guys. Um, cool, man. Do you cool. want to get that? Could we get like a link to all that as well afterwards? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. I'll see if I can put it in the comment section. Um, or I can put it. Um, or I could just get send it to one of you guys. You could put it up. Whatever floats your boat, really. Cool. We've got a few questions. Uh, we've got if you don't use Substance Designer, where would you go for materials? Where would you go for materials? Yeah. How would you make your material, basically? How would you make your materials? Yeah. Photoshop. Like oh, Photoshop. My yeah. Photoshop. Photoshop. Yeah, that yeah. would be my yeah. answer. Photoshop. You can import your own uh, maps. To that, like a sort of reference for like uh, for like roughness and things. So you can import your own textures that you'll paint on, like micro textures and stuff, and it'll paint, and you can tile it. You can also overlay textures and kind of like you know, like in ZBrush, you can use like Spotlight to you know you paint it in type thing. Uh, yeah, so you can sort of do all that sort of material stuff as well in Photoshop. Yeah, and then import it in, and you. All you do is, I mean, if you found, I mean, do we have anything in the default thing? Materials? Yeah, I mean, you can, like, just drag in. You see, like, on my screen, if you had, like, a texture, this would never work, because this is, I've just found this, literally. But, like, m more to wall, I could add that into my base, just by dragging in. And then when I painted, you see I'm painting the texture yep. that I just dragged in. Obviously, because it's not got any of the other information, you can't really tell, but, yeah. That's what you can sort of do for that type of thing. So you can make textures in, uh, you know, uh, yeah, Photoshop, and put them in. Just drag them in, because at the moment, by default, when you when you have a new uh, sort of blank slate material, it's just got these sliders. As it will say, base color, uniform color, height uniform color, roughness mm. uniform color, metallic uniform color, and that's because it's just like whatever you just put in here, it will just be painting that. But because yeah, you can put in your own sort of uh, 
things there. I mean, what have we got? What have we got that we could maybe find? Show what they are. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just random things. But yeah, you could you can do that, and uh, that's how oh, you. Oh, there's the edge we there. All the stuff I think I saw it there. The generators here. Yeah. Generators. That's what we want. Yeah. So you don't even need smart materials. They're useless. <laughs> generators. <laughs> And that way you can still keep your own specific uh, thing. Oh, okay, hang on, we found, found some some things here. Let's try this. You can make your own smart things. materials. Put this in height. From scratch. And then I now if I paint, you see it's got the height of the texture. I just sort of put in this uh, whatever this is. This is horrible looking. <laughs> but, uh, oh. you, you get an idea, you know. I mean, that's because I just found it probably wasn't built for height. I mean, what's it say? Just, I don't know, it could be anything. Maybe if I tried it in uh, roughness instead. Let's see. So now it's not painting the height, but it's painting this nice sort of hmm. pretty grimy roughness. I don't know. It's not quite what I want, but you know, it's something. Hmm. Um, yeah, which is pretty good. And then again, you can always overlay. Uh, what I'm doing here is, you know, I've put masks on. I think Chris, did you already explain? Yeah, you did. You did explain. Not uh, exactly. black and white masks, no. No, they're not pretty you. useful if you want to go over them. Yeah, I mean, so what you can do. Uh, with your model, say you wanted to mask off a specific piece of geometry or something from your UVs, like an island or something, you can generate masks. So you see up here, just like in Photoshop, yeah, I have like this little mask layer. And how you get that, say I had like a new material, just right click and you see you've got add white mask, add black, ma black mask, white mask, same as in Photoshop, means it's showing black, you know, it's not showing. So if I did black, and then no matter what I painted in here, oh, I'll just pick a random thing, bricks. You see it's not sort of showing, nothing's happening. But if I, uh, you know, you could either then paint directly on your sort of uh, what you wanted to unmask and mask, or you can click like UVs. And you see here all the UVs have come up, that's because I selected mm. this here. If I wanted to just paint on my mask, paint like a white value, you see, oh, look, paint. Uh, and you see it's just it's just popped up. That's not what I want though. I want to select it by the specific geometry. So it's just, they'd be really good with you know the helmet, like Iron Man, uh, Iron Man's helmet. You could select just the face plate yep. on its own as a UV island. So you click UV. This is the color it will be filling automatically when you select a UV. Mm -hmm. So I'd want I don't know. Let's see these these bottom three will show, and these ones. You know. So you see on my mask it's just selecting the bottom three, and the top panel. And the bottom panel, and so when I'm painting, it'll automatically work with the mask and do you know that. But this is a really poor example because I'm you know using bricks or whatever. But you know you get an idea. You know it's just like <laughs> just like Photoshop, really good, really easy, really quick. And it means you also don't have to worry about like in Photoshop when you've got like trying to make masks for your islands. You'll be like you know using the Lasso tool around it all to like get oh yeah it's got that islands and it's own mask, but here, because you can just select from your 2D thing here, it's really nice, really quick, really simple. Nice. Uh, cool. Which is, which is pretty cool. Pretty cool indeed. That's my material now. Oh, well. Um, another thing is, yeah, when you're with your, uh, your texture, you, it'll load up with like a panorama yeah. environment straight off. Uh, if you want to remove that, just so you can focus on the model, just use the environment opacity slider here. You can also change uh, the, which panorama you want. They've got like a load of default ones, and so it's like oh, lit in a room, and all the lighting sort of pre-programmed with that, which is really cool. Uh, and left uh, shift left click and hold is also to rotate the lights and the panorama around as well, so you can see. What's going on with your materials, especially on like height maps and stuff? It's really very good. useful. And then yeah, because it can be really disorientating to them. Who always you're trying to change? If you just yeah drop the opacity, you still keep the light from the new panorama, and you can just still pan it around, which is really nice, really useful. Uh, something I'd recommend, I guess. You know, it's pretty uh, it's pretty good times. Pretty <laughs> good times. Mike has a question. He says uh. He's wondering about substance when working on characters, and he says, do you do? He says, do you do all your texture in substance, or would you start poly painting, and then move to substance? Uh, it depends what kind of character. I mean, if you look at, by, 
save that really quick. And then, yeah, if you, I mean, if you open up right now, uh, a sample, see what they've got. They've got abyss. Abyss. That sounds the fun. One. Oh, the hands one's quite a funky guy. Yeah. So here's uh, Hans, a uh, pilot who, even though he has a visor, still wears sunglasses on top. <laughs> oh, yeah. Have you guys talked about how you can select polys and like just paint on them? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, yeah. sorry. Because, man, that's like the best thing about this program. Yeah, again, yeah, with the you, when you're doing this here. You can yeah. And like separate um, UV islands as well? Yeah. I, we yeah. Just, just did you just talk about oh, I'm sorry. God damn it, Kieran. Well, we did the UVs. We didn't talk about the polys, but yeah, just with that, you can select. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Good sure. old Kieran. Damn. Why isn't he, he can he can he knows substance painter? Why isn't he? <laughs> yeah, you know, crazy. But yeah, I mean, with this, what they've done is they've sort of like, you know, with the color of the gloves. Most of it has been for, but they've painted the whole thing here in substance. They've got like stitched yeah. leather and stuff. So all, it's really good for like clothing and things like that, uh, especially for hard. If I'd say surface at the moment is definitely more for like hard servicing and characters. I'm not sure if I particularly like this character, but yeah, you can you could paint it all. Because you can do like the fills on like UV uh, islands and stuff, it's pretty easy to sort of generate, you know, what what effect you sort of want. I mean he's got skin details base. Oh, that's not doing anything. Yeah. Classic. Yeah, it doesn't is poly painting just uh, diffuse essentially. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. It's just albedo. Well, that, that, that's why it compares. That's the comparison between this. This is you paint in every single map at once. Like it, it will go straight into a game engine and work. Whereas poly paint is just the the color information. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, I would. Uh, you could poly paint your characters actually for the uh, the material IDs. In different colors, yeah. so therefore you could reference that color. Say if uh, this character's mustache was red, <laughs> if it was a different part of the mesh, maybe, and then his skin was a blue, you could uh, use the blue as the mask from your material IDs. Therefore, it will only fill in the skin with the blue area. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's why his uh, head's on a different texture set. Yeah, you've got a texture set list here, by the way, as well. So if you have multiple, if you're using material sub UVs and stuff, it comes up here on texture set list. So here we are. Uh, so yeah, this guy's got you know different sets. He's got like a helmet set, and it loads up all the layers associated with that specific mm. texture. He's got a shoe set and a head set. So here, you know, it's just got all his different different head bits, I guess. But yeah, I mean, you see at the moment, like by default, you, you know, it's plasticky and stuff. But like, as he adds the base, you know, then you've got that. It's changed the smoothness a bit. Things, he, you know, changed, you know, adding sort of small details and smoothness changes, and then you know, just adding his glossy lips. Lovely. Uh, but you know, that's sort of some of the changes. And then again, he's already got the ambient occlusion over overlapped from here. See, so there's the ambient occlusion. If I remove that. Changes things. Um, another thing to mention as well is with the viewer settings on mode, you've got material again solo going through there, but you can also click additional maps so you can select the maps you've already baked and put in and stuff. Uh, Kieran was talking about, you know, last time on normals that in substance you can paint onto your old maps and things. This is a way that you can do that. You can view it and then you can fix any issues, seams, and whatnot yeah. in there. I can see a seam here actually. There's a nasty seam. <laughs> just there, you can fix that. Just with some of the tools. So yeah, uh, there you go. I guess that's like a mention of stuff. Well, I mean, with characters, because you can import the base and stuff. It depends what kind of character. If it's like a human, I don't know. Maybe you want to potty paint a bit to get that skin looking nice straight yeah. away in in uh, in ZBrush or whatever. But I mean, with some of the other ones, like yeah, Abyss. I wouldn't see a need necessarily to do lots of poly painting when you can just do it here mm. in substance. You know, he's got this weird scaly, almost metal skin. I don't know why. Yeah, that's metallic. Yeah, yeah it's really weird. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, like, 
with that, I'd say just go straight into substance. I mean, there's no, no reason yeah. you shouldn't. Pretty funky looking demon. Uh, another question. How does substance compare to Quixel Sweet? I've never used Quixel Sweet, so I can't answer this. Uh, Quixel is like a Photoshop plugin. Yeah. Which it will let you paint on all the maps at once, and it will give you a 3D view, like a rough idea of what you're going to get. I mean, the second one's just been announced, so isn't it? The trailer came yeah. Out the Quixel 2 looks ridiculous. Like, I want that. I want that. Um, I'll let you know about that one. But, um,. The first version of it, uh, yeah, it was all right. I found it uh, pretty similar, I think. Like can, the kind of what you do, how you go through the materials, and you uh, just work at it, really. But uh, I think I think substance is better because of the view, because I can I can see it directly. A really accurate representation, a representation of it. Whereas in a Quixel, it's quite difficult. Even with the viewer, I don't think it's always there at the forefront of the program. If you understand. Uh, final results-wise, I think they're both they're both fairly good. Yeah, they're both good. Uh, John asks. If it's worth, yeah, the uh, 109 pound price tag. <laughs> what do you think about that, guys? I, I think so. Much? Yeah. I mean, what, it depends. Yeah. What substance painter or quick thought? Substance yeah. painter. Substance painter. Yeah. Um, it was on nine pounds. Yeah, yeah, they had some steam. steam, right? So hmm. that's yeah, exactly how I put it. I mean, it depends what kind of a uh, person you are. You know, if you're Willing to do naughty things. What, like, what, what what does worth it mean? Like <laughs> you don't you don't need this to be good at game art. You can you mm. can go to Photoshop and just do this. <laughs> Make all the maps individually. Yeah. It's if the time is really valuable to you. If you mm -hmm. want to like be pushing forward, that's why it's like. I mean, with yeah, licenses it always costs a lot because most of the time it's the companies that buy it because they're like, well, we're a business, we want to. We want to save time because that makes it easier for us to save money in the long run. So, I mean, on a personal level, if you're like just doing it as like a little hobby, no, I guess just use Photoshop. But I mean, like, really, it's a tool you should learn because it means you know you can save time, you know, to get yeah. good results quickly. Uh, I guess it's worth it. That, that okay, respect. good. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, Sean, did you want to talk about, you know? Oh yeah, Game Jam. Yeah, of course. Yeah, Look absolutely. at Sean. <laughs> but um, first of all, uh, did you answer like there's a couple of questions on the uh, YouTube that people were looking at? Um, oh, well, Mike had a couple there. I mean, have you have you nailed oh, all those as well? Uh, uh, he's got Mike? he's got one more actually. Okay. Let's yes. How common is substance in the industry? That was it. I'm um, not. Too much at the moment. I don't I'm think. not too sure. Is how old is it? I think it's not that old. Really that's why. No, I mean, like quite a lot actually. Yeah, with all things like, if it's new, it's not necessarily going to be in there too much. I mean, hmm. yeah, I don't, I'm not sure actually how common it is at the moment. I mean, it's still like something to use, and it means like even if you learn this and haven't used Quixel, it means you've got a grasp of how these things work. Mm -hmm. of how PBR works together and things, and even though the shaded will be slightly different, it still means you you've got a knowledge. You don't have to learn substance; it's just something we thought we put on. Yeah, you don't need it, but it's cool. But it's cool. It's cool. Being able to know how substance works isn't what makes you a good game artist. It's if you <laughs> can actually do the job. If you know what like values are needed in a texture to generate a certain effect when you got your you know, your smoothness and your your roughness or whatever and your metal maps and all that stuff. And it's just that substance is a is a nice tool that helps you get a nice effect quicker. You still have to have knowledge for it to actually be useful. No. Yeah. Yeah, so this is very, very very technical. There's definitely programs like I want to hit as well and, and learn particularly. Um, just because they're going to, like, as you say, like make my life a lot easier and if I produce the work that you guys just sort of showed us, yeah, 
sort of an easy decision then really, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, awesome, awesome. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I'm a little bit quiet as well, like working away here. So, um, <laughs> Got your game jam. But uh, yeah, man, yeah, so uh, over the course um, of the last, must have been about the last couple of months, um, so there's a couple of guys uh, on our course as well as um, across the university that kind of got together and, and started out our own society. We started out um, a, games, a games development society. And yeah, man, it's, so we're working together with programmers, animators, uh, and of course us, like us as our artists. So, um, and yeah, and, and the ultimate goal uh, is, to have, um, is to produce some work together, is to like meet each other, understand um, more about each other's like process, um, and yeah, and and pretty much just make games. Because <laughs> come on, right? everyone's got a degree, yeah? and I mean, everyone's leaving and applying to the same jobs, and, and not many people have got like a game under their belt. So we thought, hey, why don't we just start a game jam and see what we can come up with? Um, so next week we'll um, be hosting our game jam at uh, Gateway House uh, at Montfort University. Um, we're looking to have about forty. Uh, 40, 40 attendants. It says on the event, I, I you know, I, I don't expect that too many people, uh, that many people anyway. I, I, well, people are telling me like, you'd be surprised there might be more because you know, there's 200 people on the event. Um, and you know what Facebook events are like, right? When people uh, say they'll go, sometimes they won't. When some people won't answer, but they'll go. You know, it's, so yeah. I don't know really what to expect, but we, <laughs> we can, um, we can, uh, we've got enough room for about 60 people. Um, and so that's excluding the staff as well. They said they want to get involved, which is pretty awesome. Uh, and so um, yeah, that's that's one thing. Um, yeah, so that's what I wanted to come talk to you guys about, and, and hopefully you guys want to get involved, and we can make some really cool stuff. Uh, so of course students will be there. So current students, we've got alumni going too. Um, and yeah, so this should be pretty awesome. And we are basing it around a theme. Uh, yeah. So we haven't talked about the theme you before. The theme. That's it. So um, number one game jam, uh, so the first game jam that the society will be having. Uh, the theme will be, uh, so six words, um, it's autumn dawns, darkness creeps, beasts sleep. So like autumn dawns is because autumn, and, we, and this is the uh, pretty much the end of um, summer over here in the UK. Uh, uh, and dawns because it's a very sort of a new start for us as a uh, as a society. It's our first time we've done that, and it's a quite a visual. So and darkness creeps. We've got Halloween coming up soon. That should be fun. Uh, be sleep because it's hibernation period as well for animals. So yeah, you can make something. It's quite a visual. So is it uh, like theme, so so different subcategories then that you choose between, or is it that? But Anything like, you can more or less if it's if it's in reference to the title in any way you get um, so it is very vague very ambiguous um, and so you if you wanted to go and take it very literally it, you can then make some sort of game based in autumn with like enemies that like are creeping and you know this dark I don't know if, but you can go other way you know it doesn't have to be uh, autumn dawns that could be like you're in the summer it. it if you've worked on any art exam and they'll give you a title, you know full well that if you want to do what you want to do, you can easily relate it to the title. But it just gives people direction, and, and so it uh, makes it a little bit more um, like it's concise. So yeah, we spoke to them. A couple had a committee, or organised and, and discussed and put a lot of ideas in. Uh, people were pretty stumped for ideas, but we churned one out in the end. So uh, hopefully um, you guys will be pretty happy about that. But so uh, what do you guys think? Yeah, Sounds it seems alright. Yeah. Yeah. I'm up for it. So I we... like uh, I won't be going. Sorry. <laughs> oh yes, yeah. <laughs> <That's just laughs> not, he's not even. He's not in the UK. <laughs> I don't count. I don't count. No, I'd be excited. I would want to be there, but. Uh, yeah, man, that's not good for us. <laughs> <laughs> that's Kieran again, guys. Being the fool. Why are you running away? <laughs> Why are you running away? Wait, uh, well, so one last thing, just really quick, before we get onto like the final parts, just about substance. Uh, if you've got like a tool that you're using and you want to swap and work on another part and then want to go back, make sure that you save your tool. You can right-click on like the mm. pre preview and you can either save your tool, save your material, or save your brush because your brush will be like you know the brush and the alpha and all that information that you'll have, and then the material will be like you know the height base color, metallic, and if you want to save it all together, you just save the tool, and then you'll find it in your tools section here. 
Well, it's already got some uh, like sort of pre-made. It's like a bullet impact one. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, and then uh, like old one. I use that one. Which one? The what's that? Oh, screwball. That's nice. Oh yeah, that's Very nice. Very useful. Automatically just bolt in. I mean, I could. That's more. Just... <sighs> Not fair. And do these create the normals as well for it? Um, yeah, yeah. yeah, you can see. Oh, right cool. yeah. normal. That's the whole thing with substance. It's. Every map is being made at the same time. You're working in all the maps. Rather than, oh, I'm going to make my albedo first, and then I'm going to make my blah, blah, blah. It's you're using all the maps. That's why it's a good tool. You see? So, yeah. So, there you go. So, yeah. I mean, I guess that's it. Anything else? Any news? What's happening next week? What are we doing? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Don't really know yet, do we? No crit again today, you know. Uh, yeah. So, what do you um you guys plan on doing some sort of crit sessions soon? Like, can yeah, you show us more about that. Yeah. That, was the, that was the whole plan of Get yeah. Good, to be honest. Um, it was more like we'd talk about programs, and then uh, people would be like, "Oh, I want to you know, crit some work or something," and we'd uh, do a bit, do like a section on that in each episode. So far, we haven't had too much. In that regard, but yeah, I mean, anyone who wants to send in any work to us either before or during the episode, like throughout the week, just say like maybe send us a message and be like, hey, are you, would it be all right if I created some of my work? Mm -hmm. We'll be up for that. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Cool, dude. It's six o'clock. I want to watch Simpsons. <laughs> <laughs> Karen, stop being an asshole. <laughs> it's five o'clock. We're on about. <laughs> Can it's I say that? It's a clock for me. Are you in Germany? Are you, are you around here, Kieran? Hang on one second. I'll pass you over. Hi, guys. Sorry about hey. that. <laughs> Kieran's such a killer whale. <laughs> but that's not me. That's actually that's Denzel at the moment. Denzel's interesting. Um, I just wanted to quickly say, like, are you guys excited about the, the new, new game or then? New year? Oh yeah. Semester. Oh yeah, definitely can't wait. Oh yeah, sorry, oh, sorry, Max. Sorry. No, it's oh, you know, I said sorry, man. No, no, just to, okay to everyone else then. Sorry, Max again. Oh, it's okay. Are you guys doing anything to prepare or anything? Um, learning a lot of software, uh, to be honest, and trying to get in every day to do work, but. Uh, what, what, what do you mean? Like, what have you been up to? I've, I heard that um, the new first years are actually going to do more two D stuff than what you guys did. Yeah. I don't yeah, know if really. that's true or not. I hope it's true because, like, I feel like your year kind of missed out on the two D side. Like right now, we're like focusing on the three D stuff. But when we started this, we wanted to like make you guys sending work. I don't know if you guys brought this up earlier. Yeah. But then like we'd crit and then you get live crit and stuff. Okay. So maybe we could do that next week. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's um, off the heels of... Okay. That's also off the heels of the Game Jam. You've got EGX uh, next week. So you'll have some, um, some big news and you'll have to spoke to... I guess you guys are going, right? You guys are coming along? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I will be yeah. there. And I will yeah. be square. Because they've got a lot of people who wanted to speak to us as well if we were up there. So that would be pretty fun. We could talk about that if you wanted to. Um... But yeah, I'd, I'd be interested to sort of to see what that's going that would be like. With, um, just just to get back idea. to the two D roots for a week, I just uh, thought it'd be good. Yeah, because yeah. I know a lot of we people have got like, their heart set and their you know their love for two D. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I know. Like I've, I've, the majority of the people on our course actually prefer two D, but we yeah. we heavily do three D stuff, which is funny. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Sorry, guys. You chose the wrong course. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, and uh, thanks for having us as well, guys. Yeah, no problem, man. Yeah, like I said, I wanted to be quick, so I didn't want to take up too much of your time. Right. But, um, We're all done. Yeah, yeah keep this formula going. It does work. And uh, uh, how, Do you reckon you'll keep it continued through the um, the course of your third year as well? So you're something that will keep going every week? Yeah, yeah. Yeah? Should be easy. Yeah. On a Sunday, yeah. Why not? Yeah. Thanks for being on, Sean. 
Yeah, that's all right. No worries. Well, so, like thanks for Dens, but I mean, you know, he's literally opposite you. <laughs> he lives with you. It's a bit hard, isn't it? So, uh, so not get him on. <laughs> all right. All right. But awesome. All right. Cool. That's it. That's awesome, it. Guys. Get good, guys. Remember. Cheers, Cheers, guys. Cheers everybody. Get Cheers. good. Ah. <laughs> <laughs>